Hello, Matthews. Gatos here. Welcome to 5.2. Before I get into the division part of this video, I want to review the multiplication. So we have this expression here, and it can be simplified into a root b minus c root d. a, b, c, and d are all whole numbers. So we want to go through and simplify, use the template to come up with the answer. So let's go ahead and do this. So root 2 times root 5 minus 12 root 3 minus root 3 times root 8 minus 2 root 30. Okay, I'm going to apply the distributive property. So root 2 times root 5 is root 10. And then root 2 times negative 12 root 3. Well, that's negative 12 and then root 6. To do the next part, I'm not going to distribute a root 3 in there. I'm going to distribute a negative root 3. So pay attention to your sign. So I'm going to distribute the whole thing. So I'm going to have negative root 3 times root 8, which is negative the root of 24. Negative root 3 times negative 2 root 30. So that will be positive 2 root 90. So notice I multiplied only my numbers with numbers and roots with roots. Now I just have to simplify. So I have the root of 10 minus, well, root 6 has no perfect square factors. 24 does. 4 is the perfect factor. 6 is imperfect. 4 times 6 is 24. Plus 2 root 90 has a perfect square factor of 9 with 10 left over. So I have, let's just make this a little bit bigger for you guys. There we go. So I have root 10 minus 12 root 6 minus 2, square root of 4 is 2 root 6, plus square root of 9 is 3 times 2 is 6 root 10. So now I can just simplify by grouping my like terms together. So I have root 10 and root 10. So I have one of them and six of them make 7 root 10. I have negative 12 root 6 and negative 2, so together that's negative 14 root 6. Okay, so let's look at the big picture here, and we want to do the template. So a root b is the positive, c root d is the negative. So if I write this right underneath here, a root b minus c root d, I can see everything lines up. So the value of a is 7, the value of b is 10, the value of C is not negative 14. It is just 14 because look, the negative has already been taken into account. And D is 6. Okay, so that's how the template would go. Let's just check on our calculator to see if we did that right. So you can see here I have my original expression, my answer, and they have the same value. So I know I have done that correctly. Okay, so moving on to the second part of this lesson, I want you to put your glasses on. They will be very important to this lesson. I actually just got some new glasses. I know you can't see them, but I'm just loving them. So glasses are certainly important. You should always wear glasses to math class. They help with division. And hopefully you get that. Division as in dividing, but division as in seeing, huh? Brilliant. Okay, let's talk about division. So again, just like with multiplication, the first thing you do is state any restrictions. Now, we have to be super careful here because there are two different things we can't do. So we can't square root a negative. We also can't divide by zero. So since we're dealing with division, we have to be on high alert with our restrictions, okay? So sometimes the fraction can be eliminated just by dividing numbers and numbers and roots with roots because simplified fractions can't have perfect square factors under the radicand, but they also can't have fractions. So you can't have a fraction where the root is in the denominator, not allowed. You can have a root in the numerator, just not in the denominator. So let's look at some questions where they divide nicely first. So divide and simplify. So you see, I have a root in the denominator, which is a problem. However, I notice that I can combine these together. So 12 divided by four is three, so that's good. Now I can combine this whole thing together as one root. So it's gonna be three times the root of 60 over three. Now I'm not allowed to root in the denominator, but the reason I did this is because I know 60 divided by three is just simply 20. So now I can simplify, I have no root in the denominator, and I just simplify into my perfect factors and my leftovers. So 
root of four is two, two times three is six, so I have six root five. So that is simplified and it has no root in the denominator. So let's just check to see if I have the correct numeric value. So 12 root 60 over four root three has the same value, numeric value as six root five. So I know I did that question correctly. Let's try another one. So I wanna divide and simplify. So nine over 30, I'll take that out first. So nine over 30, and it will be multiplied by root 10 over two. So nine over 30, well, that's a fraction, has a common factor of three. So I can divide three by each, which is three over 10. So that's three over 10 times the square root of five. So I can write it that way, or I can say three root five all over 10. So let's look here, a little tip that I have for you. Fractions in the in the numbers, that's okay. So it's okay to have fractions with numbers. It's the roots that can have fractions. So we can't have a fraction in the denominator. Let's check numerically if I did this question correctly. So here's my original nine root 10 over 30 root two. Here's my answer, three root five over 10. They have the same numeric value. So I know I did them correctly. Okay, sometimes dividing isn't gonna work out nicely. So when in that case, we're gonna to go to rationalizing the denominator. Now, rationalizing the denominator, what that really means is we're changing the denominator from an irrational number to a rational number. Here's an example, three over root five. Now, root five is an irrational number. It's not a perfect square, so it is non-repeating and non-ending. And in simplest terms, we can't have a root in the denominator. So what we want to do is get rid of that root. So I know that the inverse operation of square rooting a number is squaring a number. So I can square that number. Now I can't really square an expression because that would change its value. But what I could do is multiply it by root five, which is essentially squaring it. Root five times root five, root of the same thing times root of the same thing is the same thing without a root. But if I do that to the denominator, I need to be fair and do it to the numerator. So if you look at this right now, I've multiplied top and bottom by root five. Well, root five divided by root five is just one. And you see, I end up back here. So I haven't changed the value of a question. So it's okay to do that. So root five times root five is five. Now I have a rational denominator, which is what I want. And then I just simplify the top three times root five is three root five. So these values here, three over root five, have the same value as three root five over five. They equal the same thing. We can check that on the calculator. But I'm taking an irrational number and changing it into a rational number. That's why it's called rationalizing the denominator. So let's look at when we have monomial denominators. So to have a monomial denominator, what we're going to do is do the opposite. So the opposite of taking the square root again is squaring a number. So squaring a, denom will, a denominator will eliminate the radical. So what we're going to do to square the denominator is multiply numerator and denominator by the radical in the denominator, just the radical. If there's a number in front, don't worry about it. And then simplify the numerator and denominator. Let's try a question. So I have five over two root three. I can't have that root in the denominator, so I need to rationalize it. So to get rid of the root three, I'm going to multiply by root three, that's squaring it, but I need to be fair and do it to the top. So notice I didn't do two root three. You could if you want to, but I think it's easier just to do root three. So let's look at what we're left with. In the numerator, five root three over two times root three times root three root of the same thing times root of the same thing is the same thing without the root. So this is just five root three over six. So I've gone from an irrational denominator to a rational denominator. But my question is, do they have the same value? Well, let's go to our calculator and check. So I wanna check if five over two root three has the same value as this. And let me just make it bigger. You can in fact see they look different, but they have the same value. And this answer here is better because the denominator is rational. Okay, let's look at this. So we have a variable here. So as soon as I have a variable, I look for restrictions. So here I cannot take the square root of a negative number. So 
n, not x, let's change that, n has to be greater than or equal to 0. Okay, so let's go through the process of rationalizing. So I can't have a root in the denominator, so I want to get rid of that root. So to get rid of the root 2, I'm going to multiply top and bottom by root 2. Notice I didn't need the 3. So in the numerator, I have 4, and then root 5n times 2 is root 10n over 3 times root 2 times root 2, root of the same thing times root of the same thing is the same thing without the root. So I have 4 over 10n, 4 root 10n, sorry, over 6. So I have a rational denominator, which is what I want, but I can simplify this. So 4 over 6 has a common factor of 2. So divide each by 2, because I want my answer all the way in lowest terms, and I get this. So again, I have gone from an irrational denominator, which isn't allowed, to a rational denominator. That's why it's called rationalizing the denominator. So because my variable, uh, I have a variable, I have to do my check in the table. So I'm going to go into Y1 and do my check. So in Y1, I put my original equation. In Y2, I put my answer. And you can see in the table that they are, in fact, correct. OK, let's try this one here. So I want to divide and simplify. So I have a variable in my root, but it is also in the denominator. So what I have in this situation is double trouble. I can't square in a negative, so m has to be greater than or equal to 0. I also can't divide by 0, so m can't equal 0. So I just need to combine those together in one restriction and just say that m has to be greater than 0, but not equal to 0. That satisfies both of them. So let's go ahead and simplify this. So first thing that I notice is that 21 divides by 7. So I'm going to write this right now as just 21 over 7m, just to make my life a little easier. Now, 21 divided by 7 is 3. So this simplifies to be negative the root of 3 over m. And then let's go back and separate them. And that's a little bit easier to work with. So to get rid of my denominator that has a root of m, I'm going to multiply top and bottom by m. I'm being fair. I haven't changed the question. So in the top, I have negative root 3 times m. In the denominator, root m times root m. Root of the same thing times root of the same thing is the same thing without the root. So I should have that as my final answer. So let's go into our calculator and check to see if that's right. There's my original question. There's my answer. And the table tells me I am correct. OK, let's try another one here. So again, paying attention to my restrictions, I have a variable here. And I can't have a square root of a negative, but I also can't divide by 0. So remember, this is an example of a double restriction, double trouble. u has to be greater than or equal to 0, but it also can't equal 0. So combining that together, I'm going to say that u has to be greater than 0. Now in this one here, 5 over 12 doesn't simplify. So it doesn't work out like the last question did. But that's OK. Let's write it out what we have. So we have negative 2 over 3. And then I'm going to separate my root as root 5 over root 12u. So now I want to rationalize the denominator. I want to get rid of the root 12. So I am going to multiply top and bottom by root 12. OK, so here I have negative 2. And then 5 times 12 is 60u all over 3 times. Now, root of the same thing times root of the same thing is the same thing without the root. So that's just going to be 12u. OK, so in the numerator, let's look to see if we can simplify. I think we can, because 60 has a perfect square factor of 4. So I'm going to write that down as 4 and 15u. In the denominator, 3 times 12 is 36u. OK, so let's continue here. Square root of 4 is 2 times negative 2 is negative 4, root 15u, 
all over 36u. So that looks good. However, I can simplify that negative 4 over 36. So I know that 4 and 36 have a common factor of 4, so I'll divide each by 4. So negative 4 divided by 4 is negative 1, so I have negative root 15u, and 36 divided by 4 is 9u. Okay, so that should be my final answer, again, where u is greater than 0. Let's go to our calculator to check to see if we did it correctly. So in the y1, you see I put my original equation. In y2, I put my answer, and I go into the table and check, and they are, in fact, equal, so I know I did that correctly. Okay, let's try one with a cube root. So this is a little different. So let's first of all talk about our restrictions. Now, you can cube root a negative, we know that. The restrictions for roots are only for even powers. However, the x is in the denominator and I can't divide by zero. So I can cube root a negative, but I can't divide by zero. So my restriction is that x can't equal zero. So my tip here is when we had a square root in the denominator, we squared it. Well, if I have a cube root in the denominator, then cubing it will get rid of the denominator. So when I had a square root, I times top and bottom by that square root, in essence, squaring it. So for a cube root, squaring it isn't going to get rid of it. It's going to be cubing it. So let's look at how we can cube. We can't really cube an expression because that would change its value. But let's look at what we can do. So to get rid of a cube root, I know I need three identical factors. Well, these are the only ones that are new, okay? So since I multiplied the denominator by those, I need to also multiply the numerator by those, like that, okay? So in the numerator, I'm going to end up having 4 times the cube root of 9x times 9x is 81x squared, divided by cube root of the same thing times cube root of the same thing times cube root of the same thing is the same thing without the cube root. So now what I want to do is simplify my numerator. So I know that 81 has a perfect cube factor, and that perfect cube factor is 27. And then my leftovers will be 3 x squared all over 9x. So simplifying this further, cube root of 27 is 3 times 4 is 12. So 12 the root uh, cube root of 3x squared all over 9x. Oh, looks like my scribbling is back. Let's try that again. There we go. Okay, so looks like I would be done. However, 12 and 9 have a common factor of 3. So I want to simplify that. So I'm going to divide each one by 3. So if I divide 12 by 3, I'm left with 4. And if I divide 9x by 3, I'm left with 3x. So that would be a nice answer. So let's go to our calculator to check that. My original goes into y1. You can see my answer in y2. And in the table, y1 equals y2, so I know I did this correctly. So I hope this video of dividing monomials helped, and I look forward to seeing you for the next one.